Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys the new version of the Brave browser, which in my opinion is the best web browser to date in 2019. So one of the huge changes over the last year is that Brave is now fully compatible with Chrome web extensions. So as a Chromium-based browser, you can take any extension from the Google Chrome web store and install it. And because most web extensions are made for Chrome-based browsers first, since Google Chrome is a huge percentage of the market share, that means that almost all web plugins, you're going to have compatibility with those extensions inside of the Brave browser. That's a huge deal if you like to add add-ons to your browser so that you can have functions like rescue time to keep track of your internet usage, uh, LastPass as a package manager, Honey for getting better deals shopping online, or Camel 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 to watch Amazon prices as they fluctuate over time. But the main focus of the Brave browser that separates it from just another Chromium browser is that it is privacy focused at heart. So one of the huge changes that you'll notice about that is that the accounts that are in the Brave browser actually aren't logging into a server anywhere. So on a standard Chrome based browser, you would log into your Google account and that would have things like your browser history stored on Google servers somewhere. Now I imagine Google is overall pretty secure, but there have been many companies in the past that have gotten hacked that you would think, oh, they would have had a good security team and there would have been no compromising of user data, yet it happens. So instead, on the Brave browser, what you have are basically local accounts that you can sync across your devices. So you can see here, I can go between my Chris Tutorials account and my Chris account, but really, there's no logging in here. These are just local profiles that can contain your browsing history, and you can choose how much or as little as you want to store on your computer, but it's not a permanent account tied in with a company. So instead, how it works if you want to synchronize some of your data is you go up to the settings menu, and then you click on settings, and there'll be a tab here called sync. So how this works is rather than your information storing on a server, your information stores on your personal devices, and they can synchronize with each other when you put in the sync code. So as long as one of your devices still has the browser installed, you should be able to get that data back. So you can click here and start a synchronization chain and synchronize your data with your devices. So I'll just go ahead and do that here for fun. So I'll just go ahead and take my phone out here. So in the mobile version of Brave, I'll go into the settings menu here. Okay, so once you have that on screen, all you need to do is go into the mobile version of the Brave browser. Go up to the settings menu again, find where it says sync beta, and allow it to take photos and videos, obviously, because we're scanning a QR code. And I'm going to scan that. And I'm going to add in a device name, so I guess I'll just call it Chris Mobile. And let's go ahead and scan that in. Okay, so it's probably hard to see this, but it will list the other devices that are on the chain. So if there was something weird there, you could know that immediately. And now the synchronization is pretty much done. So at the moment, it can only synchronize bookmarks, but that's probably all you need. I'm not sure you'd actually want to synchronize your browsing history anyway. So that's how synchronization works on Brave. As long as you don't lose Brave on all your devices, you should be able to synchronize that data, which actually matters to you. In this case, your bookmarks. Um, I imagine they'll be enhancing that feature over time as well. Okay, so next let's go to a random page like google.com and show you guys the add slash script blocker. So up here to the right of the address bar, you'll see this little Brave logo and it will say when you click on it, shields up for this site. Now, on many web browsers, it's common to install an ad blocker. Um, Brave does this in a better way because not only is ad blocking built into the Brave browser in the form of shields, which you can disable on a site by site basis. So obviously this blocks ads, but it will also block third party cookies and you can have it disable all scripts on a web page if you choose. So if you go down on this menu, you can block all JavaScripts from being able to run on your page. By default, it will block third-party device recognition. So that would mean if you go on a website and they have some scripts installed, which gather information about your device, those scripts would be blocked. Now this would allow the non-third-party um, scripts, the scripts on the website that are actually part of the website to collect information. So you can actually block everything, or you can allow all of those device recognition scripts to run. So you have a couple pieces of control over here. So what Brave has done is set up Brave Rewards and Brave Publishers, basically revolving around a cryptocurrency called BAT, Basic Authentication Token. 
So the idea here is that you can actually earn rewards, basically BAT tokens, for watching ads that Brave will add to a website, those ads that actually replace the default ones on the page. And these ads are supposed to be privacy respecting, so not collecting information about your device. And with those tokens that you receive, you can actually take them and automatically contribute them back to the sites or content creators that you enjoy. So for instance, if you're watching my channel with Brave and you're signed up for Brave Rewards, you can earn basic authentication tokens and you could contribute that back to me. So the fact that you didn't watch my ad on my video doesn't hurt me so much because you watch a privacy respecting ad and then you contribute some of those tokens back to the channel you watch. And the auto contribute system allows you to not really have to even worry about it. You can just set an amount. How much do you want to contribute to all sites, all creators that you watch? And it will automatically give a percentage of whatever you've allocated to each of those creators or sites based on the percentage of time you were on their sites. So if you spent 5% of the time on my channel, it would contribute 5% of the tokens towards that channel, uh, more or less. So if we go ahead and click to learn more about this, uh, you can see that it is completely voluntary. You actually have to opt into the program. So if you just want to block ads, you can do that really easily out of the box on Brave. And by the way, if you have your own YouTube channel and you want to be a Brave publisher so that you can actually claim the BAT rewards that get auto-contributed to you by Brave users, you can go over to publishers.bat, or sorry, publishers.basicauthentication token and uh, sign up there. You basically authenticate with your YouTube account or your website, and that would be how you sign up for that. So also worth mentioning is that even without watching the ads to collect the basic authentication tokens for your browser, um, they do occasionally just give away BAT grants. So they just kind of distribute some of those tokens to individual Brave users, which those users can contribute towards the sites they like. Okay, so let's talk about a few more functions of the Brave browser. When you are browsing the internet and you do not have a VPN or anything like that, your IP is actually publicly available. Um, that would be the kind of thing that gets picked up by all of these tracker scripts. Where are you from in the world? What country are you in? Where is your computer generally located? Uh, all that kind of stuff is shown with your IP address. So you can block that with a VPN. Uh, you can also go over here to the uh, hamburger menu and you can open a new private window with Tor. So when you use the private window with Tor inside of the Brave browser, your computer is now connecting to the internet through a series of three computers on the Tor network that help to mask your IP address and other information about your computer. So if you wanna have more privacy and security when you're on the internet, using Tor is a pretty good way to do that. So that works really well if you just want to browse privately as a one-off session. So there's two real problems with that. One is that you have to remember to do it every time that you want to browse with Tor. The second is that because you don't connect to the same computers every time, but it's more of a random selection on the Tor network, uh, you can't really be sure that your browsing is going to be fast as you use the Tor network. So you can actually get a lot of slowdown there. And that is one reason why using a VPN might be a better long-term solution. So the VPN I've been currently using is called Proton VPN. You can see that they have a secure core function if you want to go through multiple servers before you do your main connection. But if you like speed, you can connect to a server that's close to where you are in the world. And I found that the speeds of the premium servers have been pretty good. I actually have a recent review of Proton VPN. You can go ahead and check out. So one of the cool things about Proton VPN, if you don't feel like spending much money at the moment, is that their free version has not only no ads, but also unlimited bandwidth. Those two things in combination, I don't know any other VPNs that does that. And on top of that, they have a commitment on the website to not keep logs of your activity, um, basically respecting your privacy as you browse online. So if you have any interest in that, I'll include a link to Proton VPN in the description. So that pretty much covers just about it with the Brave browser. Uh, worth mentioning here, you can import your old bookmarks from other browsers, so that'll help you get started a little bit. The default search engine in Brave browser, which is the one I always use, is DuckDuckGo, a privacy respecting search engine. So perfect match with the Brave browser there. And you can actually select from light or dark themes. So if I wanted to, as the welcoming tool, I can go ahead and click here and change over to a dark theme if you prefer that. 
So as far as browsing speed goes, it's going to be faster in the Brave browser as well, because as Brave browser shields are blocking ads and unwanted scripts on your website, that actually helps the websites to load faster. And because it's already Chromium based, Chrome in general is very fast. So that's a good combination. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it for what I can say about the Brave browser. It's just really awesome. It has a lot of cool features that you don't see in other browsers so much. It's fast. It has a great looking interface. And they've been rapidly building up the feature set. So I'm actually looking forward to what they might have coming over the next year as well. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at the best browser for 2019, Brave Browser. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in my future video content.